you know, sometimes you're cruising down that psychedelic fucking street on a fucked up bus, and you got a bunch of shit with you that you're trying to carry across the city, and you're bugging out because you got your arms fucking full of the shit, your muscles are spazzing out, you're trying to carry your bike alongside too, and next thing you know, you're on a bus with a bunch of crazy ass old ladies and dudes. Next thing you know, this old German man says, Oh, you have vinyl, my friend, vinyl! You say, fuck yeah, bad boy. Look at the cover of this biatch. And he sees it's me on the cover and he had a fucking flip out. He's like, oh, shit. Everybody up in that fucking bus. I'm talking all the ladies and the dudes. Fucking H2 to my fucking 202. I'm talking so ancient. They vaginas filled with psychedelic crypts and psychedelic scripts from before the Bible was birthed. I'm talking some Illuminati scripture, huh? I'm talking that shit was so old time. And they saw that cover of that spiritual vinyl, and all of a sudden it was like Niagara Falls flowing between their legs, man. You know what I'm saying? Cause the hurricane is up on that cover, man. And that's what this first song's about. It's called that Holy Big Frog Mountain Blues. It's a spiritual song about a holy mountain top. On when I lived back in that holy joint called motherfucking Atlantis, Georgia. And before that, when I lived in that holy East Tennessee, oh yeah, it's called the Holy Big Frog Mountain. Flipping and flopping. Ooh, look at those nips. Ooh, 
Inside the spot, and then took me out into the. This is a homeless pimp. He took me out into the street. He told me we was gonna split a bottle of locker. Oh yeah, and he had this little black dog named Smokey tied up on a psychedelic leash on the newspaper rack. Now this homeless pimp, his name is Tigger. Oh yeah, like my boy Winnie the Pooh's boy. Now this homeless man Tigger. He's known to be a biatch, oh yeah, to be also a son of a bitch. And he is also known to be a fascist, oh yeah, he's also known to take young dudes in the alley and try to toss them. And he tried to toss me mine. But he took me to the liquor store. I bought a whole half fifth of that spiritual ancient age whiskey. And me and him split it together. We poured it in, you know, a spiritual water bottle and one half, kind of like I got my vodka up in this spiritual water bottle right now, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes that's how you got to do that. Next thing you know, we inside, I'm wasted as fuck. Tigger is twice as wasted as me. He comes up in my man Terry Turtle during the set and picks up his harmonica and starts playing into the microphone while my man Terry Turtle is rocking out on the guitar. Terry Turtle, my gangster, my hero, 60 motherfucking three years old, Harrison Turd gangster. Motherfucker grew up on the side of a gangster spiritual haunted creek named motherfucking Bulls Run, Blacks Run. Psychedelic vibes with little boys urinating into it on the side. Psychedelic ducks being saved and squirrels being motherfucking severed. Psychedelic cults, occult shrimps, psychedelic little shacks filled with gangsters. Psychedelic vibes, oh yeah! Psychedelic fascist co-ops such as the city greed, things like that. Fascist vibes, oh yeah. Him trying to fight him off like a fucking psychedelic warlord, oh yeah. Pull out your sword. In my case, I pull out my 10 inch. Motherfucker, yeah, you know we the shrimp shrinch. You know we bust out the wrench if the bike be broken. You know we fix it, we don't take it to bombs. Not a motherfucking bike's hot bomb, cause we ain't token that much weed. I can fix it myself. I ain't trying to pay a motherfucking million for a fascist bike up on the shelf. You know how we do it right, motherfucker. But my man Kung Fu Charlie fixes him up right and he does holy service to the motherfucking community. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know that spiritual vibe is flowing. You know, like a holy ocean of vibes, they growing up in JP. We need to cleanse some crackers. We need to slap them, take them out for a good time, and say, for rapper to rap them. You know, sometimes you need to step upon a cracker and crap them. You know, sometimes you need to. Mother can get down and show some fools how to puff pounds and do it right and burn it down. Down with the clown, I see pee and the in the ground. Motherfucker, you know, we don't fuck around. Motherfucker, you know, we only puff pounds. If you bring an eighth to me, I'll slap you across the face of Judah. But I'm trying to blaze down for real, man. You see, we doing it right, motherfucker. I heard Papa Hagen's got it out for me. I heard he's looking for a gangster, so G. Supposedly I said give me dome to a fat lesbian down the street But in all actuality I was very peaceful and loving to her And she was fascist to me But that's usually the way it goes and that's why we drill OG But then I said later in a motherfucking past experience I said motherfucker she should have given me dome Because I am a gangster and you know that's the way it goes Oh yeah And you know we gangsters Motherfucking stay alive 24 motherfucking 7 until we die Biatch This next song is called My Spiritual Shrippinati Blues Woo!
had sick bands playing tonight, like I said. Stick around for all of them if you got some sense, man. And that's what this last song's about. It's about having some gangster sense. <laughs> now let me tell you, way back in the day, I'm talking like seven years ago. I was still in high school, oh yeah. Me and a gangster named Scotty Steve, a holy spiritual brother. We decided to go to my friend's parents' house at about 5 a.m. in the morning. Now see, my friend, my best friend in the world is a gangster who lives in Detroit named Angelo Jenkins, oh yeah. Me and him, they call the Wonder Twins. We are those spiritual Wonder Twins. And maybe y'all will meet him one day. He is a powerful force to reckon with. His name is Angelo Jenkins. He goes by Young Schizo, also by Loco Lobo in Spanish Crazy Wolf. <laughs> he is a spiritual warlord of this holy existence, oh yeah. And when me and him get together, we fucking make earthquakes happen. We make the earth shake and quiver, because that's the spiritual vibes that we motherfucking deliver. You guys to understand when we get together, that shit is on another level, yeah. And so his parents caught him stealing weed from his stepdad. It was his stepdad and his mom. And they kicked him out of the house, man. They was in motherfucking South Carolina where I was living at the time. We was best friends. And his parents kicked him out of the house because he was stealing their weed. They sent him to Detroit where he was born and where he belongs because he's a true ass motherfucking G. And I'm always thinking about moving out there with him. Oh, yeah. All the time, every day. I'm like, damn, I should go to Detroit. Oh, yeah. Because it's a spiritual temple of life and love and progression of that holy human race. Minus all the yuppie disgrace that is prevalent around this area. Oh, yeah. And next thing you know, my man Angelo Jenkins is gone. And me and Scottish Steve are like, what are we going to do? Let's go and let's fucking, you know, let's go steal from his parents' garage in the middle of the night. So we go to his parents' house. Of course their car doors are unlocked. I go into their car at his five, between five and six a.m. And I open the garage door from inside their car, okay, between five and six a.m. Now mind you, his parents are true gangsters. His stepdad has shot people before, oh yeah. His stepdad carries pistols everywhere he goes, oh yeah. And I am opening his garage door with the electronic garage door opener between 5 and 6 a.m. on a motherfucking weekend, oh yeah, I think it was a Friday night. <laughs> and I go into this psychedelic garage, oh yeah, with my midget brother, extra cornbread Steve. I'm sorry, Scottish Steve. And next thing you know, I steal a little pink girl's tennis racket. And I stole a psychedelic air freshener. It was like a big pull bag of potpourri type of thing. And I'm fucking scrounging around the driveway. I got a mini girl's pink racket, potpourri air freshener. And I also got like a basketball or something like that. And all of a sudden, Angelo Jenkins' stepdad comes through the motherfucking door that connects to the garage. And he's got a spiritual black 9 milli up in his hand. And he starts firing it into the air <laughs> while he's chasing me out of the driveway. Oh, yeah. But he did not shoot me. He did not shoot me. He fired into the air. And about a year and a half later... After all that happened, I said to Angelo Jenkins, I said, just so you know, me and Scottish Steve went to your parents' house and we stole some shit out the garage and opened it up at 5 a.m. in the morning and your stepdad chased me out with a pistol. And he said, yeah. He said, my stepdad told me about that. <laughs> and he said, I could have sworn that was Frank. <laughs> and that's why his gangsta ass didn't blast me. Because he knew it was the hurricane. See, that transcends all gastronomists. That transcends getting popped, oh yeah. As long as you're not stealing anything of worth, you know what I'm saying? 
If you steal it, a little pink tennis racket and Angelo Jenkins' stepdad sees you. Luckily, because out of hurricane, he did not blast me, oh yeah. But anybody else, he would have capped a dumb white ass, oh yeah. And next thing you know, me and extra motherfucking, I mean, Scott and Steve are cruising down that road. We was mad drunk after we ran from my, my bad boy with the pistol. We was drunk, he was behind the driver's seat, we was cruising, and I blacked out. You know what I'm saying? Right after that, I remember the fires, the motherfucking pistol being fired. And I remember hopping into the car and driving away and going, God damn, that was it, you don't stop that shooting at my ass. You know, but next thing you know, we both woke up in this yuppie-ass neighborhood, and our car was in the center of a psychedelic, huge-ass, like, three-acre lawn with no <laughs> tracks leading to it. <laughs> I think aliens abducted me and my brother. <laughs> now you know there's no way to prove that or no. But we were saved by getting popped, so probably the aliens were like, okay, we're gonna shove something up their ass while they blacked out, you know. Pop them down in this yuppie-ass neighborhood. Hopefully they don't remember this shit. And that's what happened. That's what this last song's about, man. I got some <laughs> records for sale, man. It's called the Lonesome Mountain Blues. It's about being a lonely ass fool. Thinking about all kinds of psychedelic ass shit. And getting things done, man, out in that holy spiritual wilderness.
Praise the Lord, man. Yeah.